welcome to my webinar. My name is Sarah Hollett. I'm an application engineer here at CATA. And today I'd like to talk about SOLIDWORKS tools you may have forgotten. I think we're all aware that SOLIDWORKS has a vast amount of tools and it's easy to forget the tools that aren't located on your main toolbars or your go-to tabs in your command manager. So what I'd like to do is go over some that I believe will be big design time savers. So let's just go ahead and take a look at that agenda for today. So we've got a few things here on our agenda. One, we're gonna look at sketch tools. And the two sketch tools I wanna take a look at are gonna drastically limit the amount of time, drastically decrease the amount of time you're gonna spend sketching. Now selection filters. So a little purple funnel that comes up next to your mouse, we are going to turn that on intentionally. We're gonna go over the hotkeys that usually get pressed to turn it on and how you can make it work for you instead of just showing up you know, at random. So we're gonna take a look at that. And then lastly, we're gonna look at selection tools for assemblies. Now see here, here we have our select button. So if you've never used that little drop down carrot next to that select button, then we are going to introduce a whole new world of tools there. So lots and lots of things to look at. And we've got lots of selections that are going to save you time when it comes to modeling or going through your assemblies. All right, our sketch tools. These two are really great. We've got a modify sketch tool, which allows you to reposition or resize your sketch. You can use, you can reuse geometry. You won't have to, you know, scratch your sketch and start over. What we can do is we can move it around or move your sketch origin. We also have silhouette entities, which it creates a sketch just from the outside of the components or multiple components in your assembly very very fast all right let's dive into that modify sketch so modify sketch has been in solidworks for a long long time this is not a new tool and here we can see i put up a little picture here modify sketch is a tool that instead of getting a property window that shows up on the left hand side of your screen you actually get this dialog box that pops up that's how old this tool is and now for the functions here, we're able to, one, we have a scale about. So we can use our sketch origin, our red sketch origin, or I'm gonna point out what our movable origin is. And we can scale around that. We also have the option to translate. So it means you can you know, reposition our sketch or we can rotate it and we can choose to rotate it about a certain point or just rotate the sketch about its center. All right, I've got a, Exam an example here to show you guys just how well this works. So here I've got a sketch, or here I've got a part model. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get a usable sketch. So I'm going to take our logo here and I'm just going to copy and paste it over on this planar surface. Now, Modify Sketch works great for these copied sketches because they don't have any outside or external relations. We get to our Modify Sketch sketch tool here, we can see we have our underdefined sketch, which allows us a lot of flexibility. And then here we've got our factor, our movable origin, which is right here. You can click and drag it around. Now I wanna scale about that movable origin. So here you can see I scaled it down to half the size and it was positioned, scaled around that center of my actual sketch. And now what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at we can rotate this origin so i move that origin down to the bottom there and i can type in an angle to rotate about that origin or i can right click and i've got this right mouse feedback here that allows me to right click and drag so what i can do is just you know move it and position it where i'd like we get that little yellow connection line that shows you, you know, where you're rotating from. So really, really fast way to reposition. Now I'm gonna go uh, into another sketch here and I'm gonna show you how the translate works, okay? So let's go ahead, we've got another sketch of our logo and we can actually translate. So if I select this point here, it gives me that X and Y values of where it's pos positioned. Now, if I go 
to move this, it actually moves the whole or the whole sketch origin. Now, if I left click on it, it can click and drag it around, and it's a very fast way to reposition. Okay, so we also have on our modify sketch, there's the option to mirror or flip over or X and Y. Now it didn't show up in our modify dialog box because this is only with the right mouse gestures. So we can flip our, our sketch over an axis using this right mouse click. So I wanted to point this out separately because you're not going to find it in that modify box. Now I've got an example here. I put up kind of like a quadrant here so that we can see just how our sketch moves. So I'm going to go ahead and, and reopen that modify sketch tool. Remember, you have to make sure that you're in the sketch, editing a sketch in order to access this tool. Now, I'm going to zoom in here. I've got these right mouse clicks. If I hover over certain areas, I get flip about the Y, flip it back. I get the option to flip about the X and about the both, both the X and the Y. Now we can take this little origin. Let me push, put us back to our original position here. Take the origin, we can snap to a line, a center point, and you know, any sort of existing edge, and we can flip about those as well. So we don't have to recreate our sketch, we don't have to make a new sketch. We can take this one here and we can flip it reposition. Now, if you have an external relationship on your sketch, which means maybe you made it coincident to an origin or to an edge or point, you'll want to go ahead and delete or get rid of that external relationship so that way you can utilize all the tools in our modify box. All right, our next item here for our sketch tools is silhouette entities. Now this projects an outline of a body here. I've got a little example onto your sketch plane. Now this is different from convert entities because convert entities, you can select maybe a face of a part or an edge, an arc, and it creates a sketch for you. Here we have the option to select one body, multiple bodies, or go to an assembly. Now, this is also very, very important. You can use it for imported bodies, which is great. So if you get an imported body, if you're working with a customer that sends you parts and you need to make an edit or you need to resize it, you can take that imported body, do a silhouette of that sketch or do a silhouette of that body, and you can go straight into a sketch and start uh, making some edits. So I've got an example. Here I have an assembly that I want to show you just how fast and powerful the silhouette entities is. I've got a plane ready. It's parallel to my front plane here. Now, if I open up a sketch and go to my silhouette entities, so it's under our sketch tools again, and it's located next to our convert entities. I can go straight to my flyout feature tree. I can grab a sub assembly, individual components. I can even grab things under this pattern here. And you see it highlights everything on my graphics window. And once I go ahead and say, okay, it takes the entire outline of this assembly and projects it onto my, onto my sketch plane here. This is great if you're gonna be doing anything with packaging, possibly even mold design, uh, any sort of housing, I even had a customer that did something like this with, a, with an assembly where they took the outline of an item that was going to be revolving inside the housing and checked for clearances. So it's really, really useful. All right, so selection tools here. We're going to look at that selection filter. I'm going to briefly talk about a selection set, how you can use it. And then I'll, then I'll dive into our more advanced selections. Let's talk about how we turn that purple funnel off and on intentionally. Okay, so we, we can locate it through our view, our view toolbar selection filter, but it also has a hotkey. So if we want to look at our selection filter, we can use our F5 to toggle that toolbar off and on. Now this is, not one individual tool. We've got multiple tools here 
Um, I believe there's over 20 tools just on this toolbar. And so it's important that instead of getting frustrated with this toolbar, let's make it work for us, okay? So let's take a look. We've got vertices, edges, and faces that all have hotkeys. It's really common that these are the hotkeys that get accidentally pressed that turn your filter on. Now that X key for faces is right next to our space bar. So if you're trying to actually look or reorient the view of your model, you can actually accidentally turn on those faces. And so here's a, I'm gonna show you an example of how we can navigate through this selection filter. I've got this polygon here that I'm going to use. Now I'll go ahead and I'll access the toolbar through our regular drop-down menu, and then I'll show you how we can toggle it with our hotkeys, okay? So we've got our selection filter, our purple funnel, and here is our, our uh, filter toolbar, okay? There, if we take a look, we've got in the first selection here, we've got items for solid or surface bodies, and then towards the middle, we have items where we can select individual things from sketches. Now we've got filters for drawings, routing, we've got, and even for mesh bodies. So lots of diversity in this toolbar. Now we can toggle it off and on using these hotkeys. So if I go ahead and I press um, on my F5 key, I can toggle this off and on. All right, now if I select a tool, I get that purple funnel that pops up next to my cursor. To turn that off and on, you can use your F6, toggle that off and on, or you can just deselect it from the toolbar. There's also a clear all filter. So if you don't want any of those tools on, instead of selecting each one, you can clear them all. Now, sometimes the selection filter pops up anchored somewhere on your screen. I went ahead and pulled it off so that it was easier for us to view. All right, let's go ahead and see how some of this works here. We're going to select, we're going to select our filter edges. All right, and if you take a look, when I come out here, I can't select on any of these spaces. It limits me to just edges. Now what I want to do, I'm gonna turn it off real quick and I'm gonna go normal to this face and I'm gonna box select some items here. I'm going to move this real quick so you got a good view. And then I want to, quickly grab all of these edges that I can see just from the top view of this polygon. Now I'm going to show you a little trick because you might not know that once you select all of these edges, you can actually go straight into a sketch. So what I want to do is show you that you can go from a solid body to a 3D sketch right away using this filter. So I've grabbed all my edges. I'm going into a 3D sketch. I'm gonna convert all those edges. And now if I go ahead and exit out of this sketch, give me a second, I'm gonna hide this body so we can take a look at our 3D sketch. So it's a little tip there in case you didn't know that you're able um, to quickly go from a solid body to a 3D sketch. So let me hide this real quick and here we go. Now you can use this for weldments, um, you can make a frame, and then you don't have to spend all that time in your 3D sketch environment trying to get all your angles and planes sketched on correctly. All right, let's take a look. I am gonna use the same polygon for another example. We're gonna take a look at another one of these filter tools. Okay, I wanna take a look at the faces. So this is another common one that's also really great. So if we're selecting items right off of our model, this really lends itself to some direct editing tools. So I'm gonna grab all of these faces and you'll see that I've got some missing here. Now my favorite part about this selection filter is that you have the option to turn a filter on and go to select all. And without having to click anything on your actual model, you can select every single face. Now, I'm gonna pause this example for just a moment and I wanna go into what I'm gonna do now that I have all of these items selected, right? How do, now that we've used our selection filter, what do we do with it, okay? So I'm gonna talk about selection sets just very briefly. So now that I have all my faces selected, I can group them together in what's called a selection set. And what it does is it saves all those faces so that I can use them in tools that call for a selection 
of faces, you know, or edges. So maybe you've grabbed a bunch of edges and you want to do uh, a fillet. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to set up a selection set real quick. I'm going to go back to my example here. And now with all these selected, I'm just going to right click while they're still highlighted. And I'm going to go to that save selection. And then we have new selection. Okay, so it says new because you can, if you already have selection sets in there, you can add to it. Okay, so now let's take a look. We have a new folder in our fly or in our feature manager tree. We can see all 16 of my faces are selected and saved. Selection sets work almost anywhere that you can use a group of selections. So let's see, I'm gonna show you a quick example of how we can use this. So I like to use this a lot with some direct editing tools. And if you're interested in more direct editing tools after this example, uh, I have another webcast that you can take a look at. So I'm just gonna use the move face command because right now you know, I've got a lot of faces. So I'm gonna use my move face command and I can go right to my flyout tree. I'm gonna grab that selection set and it's gonna automatically bring in all of these faces. So it's very, very fast. We can see we've got a little preview here. And so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna flip the direction, make it a little smaller. And we're gonna say, okay, now we've got a different part. Looks really, really fast. Great way to use these selection filters, especially. So I was using the solid bodies filter or solid bodies or surface bodies filter, which is why, you know, I wanted to go into some of these direct editing tools. Really lends itself to if you've got some imported bodies that you want to work with. That's a great time saver. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at our select tool. It's this little arrow here with the drop down. Now, if you haven't dug into this tool before, I've got a little picture here what this drop down looks like expanded. There are lots and lots of tools, lots of selection options here that are great for when you're working in larger assemblies. Like if you don't want to dive into some of those sub assemblies or you've got lots of things hidden, this is a great, great tool. I've got an example here of an assembly. You can see in my, or my feature manager tree, I've got things hidden. I have things suppressed. I've got toolbox parts. All right, here's our drop down. Here's where it's located. So here's all of those tools. And I'm gonna highlight some of them. So let's go ahead and take a look at our hidden items. So I'm gonna try to bring back some of the items that I can't see so we can go and do some other edits. Now I can go straight from here and I can highlight them all from the feature tree. I can go straight into showing those items. Grabs every single one. All you'll need to do is right click on one of them. All right, now what we can do is, all right, got a little update there on my graphics. And now I'm gonna take a look at all the items we have suppressed, right? So we can grab every single suppressed item. Now, if you had a sub assembly in here, it would also grab any of those items that were suppressed as well. So this saves you. So I've got a fairly short feature tree here, but I'm sure you can tell me when you have a large feature tree, it gets really challenging to dig through. All right, I'm just going to unsuppress all these items here. And then once I have everything showing, we're going to go and grab all of our toolbox items. This one is super handy if you want to make a configuration where you don't have all of your toolbox items showing at once. Now this helps save on performance. You now if you want to make a configuration where they're, they're hidden. So I've got uh, all my toolbox items selected now I can go right click on them go straight into configure component okay and it brings up this table so I can go straight into a new configuration I'll just type in you know we want maybe our fastener suppressed here and so I can just type in fastener suppressed and then we can go and suppress everything and you can do that with any of the items you know that you want to select you can right click and go to configure Okay, very, very fast. Okay, advanced selection. So this is at the very, very bottom of that select drop down, And this has a whole other slew of tools. And this also is very customizable. 
you are able to grab and filter components based on either one or more categories, conditions, values. If you look at this little picture here that I've provided, we've got file type and status. So if you want to grab all of your items that have errors and go take a look at them, maybe you want to suppress them. You know, if you want to look for volume, you can set up custom properties as well. So in each one of these has the conditions and category types that you can customize. So let's take a look at an example of how we use this. So I've got my same, sub, or same assembly here, and I'm gonna go right in and look at those advanced options. So advanced select down at the very, very bottom, open that up, and now you'll wanna select in category one. You'll get that drop down, and you can take a look at all the different items that you can select. Now, I've already gone through and set up some material conditions. So I'm going to go to my custom properties. I'm going to go and select on the material option. And then for our condition, we can set equals to, contains, does not contain. Now I'm going to do contains, and I'm going to look for a 1060 alloy. I'm just going to type in 1060, so I don't have to type in the whole thing because I've got contains here, so it doesn't have to be exact. Now, if you look at manage searches, you see the tab at the top, we're going to dive into what, what that is. Okay, so I've got my items highlighted over here in my feature manager tree. And these are all the items that match this category of custom material properties. Okay, so now if I go to manage searches, oh, first we need to save. We're going to save our search, so we'll need to type in a name. I'm just going to make this our you know, our material for 1060 alloy, and then that little save button becomes active. Now that we've got a name, we're gonna save it. Once you save this search, you can use it for any one of your, your, uh, your assemblies or sub assemblies, and then you can select it there, you can add it to favorites, and you can have a whole list of custom searches that are gonna help you go through your, uh, your assemblies much more quickly. I'm going to go ahead and let's look at, so we've got an and or or option here. And so you can look, so if you have or, what it's going to do is it will find, you know, one, my custom property, along with any of the properties that fit what I'm going to put in next. So I, I want to do is I want to narrow this down. So I'm going to go to and. Well, and then when I put this new category in here, so I just want to do mass. I've got my material set. I'm going to go ahead and choose my mass. And then it will filter out the items that fit both categories. And so I just want something where my mass is over 20 grams. So now it uses, when you type in 20, it's going to use your document properties. I have it set up for grams. So it's looking for any item I have that is over 20 grams. Now you can save uh, this combination as well. So if you wanted to narrow things down, uh, and do the and or or, you can save them as a combination of searches. Now, what's really nice about this tool is you can also look for your document file names. So if you have a certain amount of files that you get from, a, uh, you know, maybe your distributor or where you order from, you can actually search for, you know, certain document names. Maybe you have some files that come from a certain project. So you can really narrow things down and quickly go through. So if you haven't tried this advanced component selection yet and you work in, in the large assemblies, I highly encourage you take a look at this. All right, this actually wraps up my last, uh, my last example I have for us today. So I wanna do just a quick recap of all the items I went over in this webcast, okay? So I've got our sketch tools that do a lot of the sketching for you, right? Silhouette Entities makes that sketch for you. Modify Sketch allows you to reuse. So if you're going to copy any of those sketches, you can reuse them. Or if you just need to fix your current sketch, reorient it somewhere, then it allows you to not have to recreate a new sketch. We figured out how to use those selection filters with our part models and ways that we can use them with some direct editing tools. 
We looked at that selection filter, that whole toolbar has over 20 tools on it. I, I suggest playing around with it and trying out some of those tools. And now that we know what hot, the hotkeys are and we know what, what our, um, you know, how to toggle them off and on, you'll never get stuck with that filter turned on again. Now we've got our selection tools for assemblies. The main ones that I see so often is the suppressed, hidden, and toolbox. You know, I have customers ask me, is there a way that I can grab all my toolbox items at once? I'm like, absolutely. You want to go to this selection tools for assemblies. And then we've got that advanced one where you can save any of your customized searches. All right, guys, thank you so much.